Tu vida va a ser siempre un desastre. Y ya no vas a cambiar porque sos un tipo grande. Sos una víctima. Un pobre desgraciado. Hi, good afternoon. Let's commence the press conference of the film Rojo, which competes in the official section in this edition of the San Sebastian International Film Festival. We've got, from the end, Barbara Sarasolade. She's a producer of the company, Federico Eguchi. I hope I pronounced it well, who's also a producer, actors Alfredo Castro, Andrea Frigerio, and Dario Grandinetti, and the director Benjamin Naishat. Naishat. Uh, in the front row, we've got the co producers Rachel Daisy Ellis, uh, Irma Tros, Marlene Slot, and the associate producers Van Betzler and Jamal Senel Said. I hope I pronounced all of those right. <laughs> all beautiful names, of course. And if you deem. Let's start with the press conference. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, please. Congratulations for the film. I liked it very much, very beautiful film. I'd like to know whether the plot of the film has to do with the period it, it takes place, that's say 1975 in the word, the title Rojo. Could you develop that a bit further in depth if you'd be kind enough? Yes, I think the plot from the period of time it can't be disassociated it couldn't have taken place in any period we're talking about a context which is the context in which the conditions to make it possible f for a state t terror terrorism and genocide came along it, it's just pr the film is uh, placed just prior to this some others have got the context to be able to read this um, but the others will follow the police sort of side of the, of the of the plot that the film also offers. But quite clearly, it's a film that has to do, or it tries to be about the civil compl complicity in Argentina during that period. I'm not too sure whether Dario wants to add anything. No, I coincide with what you're saying, or agree. Um, I think that precisely the film, what it seems to us. It talks about that, and I personally, what I believe is, to assess it, is that Benjamin's, uh, the way he looks at that period of time and how he, the way he chooses to talk about that dark period that took place in our country, this has never been shown in Argentina, in Argentinian cinema, cinema that is to say the complicity of the civil society. Every time you show something related to Argentinian dictatorship, it's with the presence of uniforms and tanks and weapons and so on and deaths and m missing people uh, that existed, unfortunately. But as in the time, I think that this deserves playing attention to it, uh, especially coming from from such a young person as Benjamin is, who didn't live through that period. And so to have it very clear in his mind how things were and think how things took place and how they can move him, move us this way, I think it's uh, twofold. It's doubly meritorious for him to do so. Okay, first of all, thank you very much for the film and for being here today. I would like to ask the director, First of all, why did you decide to make this film upon a period of time that you didn't live in because you were born after the dictatorship? And I understand it's an omnipresent uh, issue in Argentina. And also, secondly, talk about the script. When you talk about Diego's grandfather, who was a German diplomat, I wonder that diplomatic has a Nazi background and whether you wanted to continue between Nazism and then the dictatorship in Argentina. Well, let's start with the first part of your question. I think that, obviously, I was born in the 1980s. I didn't live uh, directly through the 70s. Having said that, I've got a family history that is to say my family had to seek exile in the 70s. Their house was burnt in the province of Córdoba by a paramilitary commander because they belonged to left-wing classist uh, militants uh, supporting uh, that uh, left-wing But in, in Argentina. But it, it, what you don't have to... I uh, live in that period because uh, uh, to, to take care of that because um to to address this issue otherwise we would have wasted our time but I think the, the 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 good thing about making a film such as this at at present has to do with talking as well about the dangers that take place in certain places in Latin America 
in general and in Argentina in particular. Part of your question is quite a current on your say. I did confess I'd never thought about that. It's not necessary to, for there to be links between directly between what you said because the analogies are perhaps quite clear cut between one evil and another, so to speak. Tenemos alguna pregunta. Are there any other questions? Yes. Please, could you give the microphone to the person in the front row? Hi. Someone said the, uh, something about this, but the question wasn't asked. Why is a film called Rojo? Because why is it called Rojo? I think that it's. It, I think it's great that anyone. I don't have a clear cut, uh, an absolute answer to that, but I think there's a. A symbolic side in the choice, which is quite obvious in the 1970s in Argentina, it's explained in the context of the Cold War, or all of the conception of a, th a socialist uh, threat and that flies over certain, uh, hovers over some, uh, some uh, characters, for example, like Alfredo Castro's uh, character, and then there's a period which is almost epiphany and blood and an eclipse. And it's a word that it appeared in the emerged in the developing of the crew of the project. It's like a point of encounter of the ideas to 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 write the script, and not always knows where they come from. I'm not too sure whether Alfredo, you, how do you interpret that? No, it's not as clear as yours. But I think it's great that you asked the question, and I would just like to say that I'm. I'm very passionate. I'm, I'm very excited that people like Benjamin are addressing issues of this nature, um, where impunity has navigated for 30 or 40 years, absolute impunity in our countries, where there are still military people live their day-to-day -day lives, and they have not been. The, I, they don't. No, the, I, the, no for, you shouldn't be. For, there's no forgiveness and no forget. Uh, I think it's great a film, and I'm great to participate in, in a young man's film with this great creativity and sensitivity of looking towards the future. And as regards to that, one of the things I was interested in, this is a question for the three actors, is how did you approach your roles in the sense these are roles with a lot of dark and clear sides? Well, we're on the on their journey uh, with them, but these are people that carry out a series of actions that that are questionable because you were talking about talking about the dictatorship from the margins but uh, how did the actors address and approach these actors do you have empathy with them or well in my specific case when in 1975 i was 14 so therefore i lived this climate and this period and what most impacts me about the way of benjamin has n n used it in his narrative, he explained it very well. It's not a sine qua non uh, uh, excuse to, ha to have lived in it, and, but I couldn't, and to, I couldn't have done it so well even though I did live in that period because we had a feeling of a, a double, mor double morals and there was a, a conditioning factor of not knowing, you know, we're not asking questions because it might have been dangerous for you. And I remember there, there are many of us that we didn't know what social origin they had because this could generate being in a telephone a list of telephones and all of a sudden this would mean you you would you would lose your life i remember that perfectly well and as regards to today what i feel is that that each time that a society asks for peace behind this peace which seems innocent and naive and well adventured there may be uh, the day of asking of blood for example something that the society doesn't want uh, doesn't like it should be and that question could be very dangerous and we're almost talking in the past but it could also happen today and tomorrow i believe in my case, okay. in my case what i would like to say if the if the film didn't take place in the time it took place it would have been much more complicated for me the script was quite clear in the sense that of what we wanted to talk about and in which way we wanted to talk about that issue. I've lived and I, it's quite present, that period is, I've lived in that period and I had, it's quite present in, in my mind. And when I read the script, I saw that the climate and the atmosphere and everything that we lived in such a, a strange way back then, 
we all knew something ugly was happening, albeit without having being quite certain of the magnitude of what was being set up and then what happened subsequently. And and if leaving the question a bit, I aspire and I hope that this film make us will make us reflect upon the need of being aware. Always. Because they don't leave ever. They're always there and we have to be very aware to see them if they're coming, when they come, to make sure we see them from afar while they're coming so that they don't surprise us anymore because they continue to be there and they continue to work in different ways but with the same objective in mind to keep everything for themselves. I wanted to add something small, uh, just a small uh, detail. I'm Chilean. We lived a dictatorship at the same time as Argentina. And to your question, how did I address and approach my role? What I liked is the contradiction of this character and the man between his religious deep faith, real and sincere faith, and the horrors, and being accomplice of the horrors of such a horrible dictatorship as, as it was. That in the film has an ethical value, which is quite noticeable. And a young director addressing this, I think it's marvelous because I insist, you know, you see a bit of future there, you see some future, but that contradiction, ethical contradictions were very interesting f in the film of the passive accomplices, accomplices of the, uh, that have never been, uh, of the dictatorship, that never went to jail, they've never been judged, and this was very intelligently and very sensitively addressed in the film. Okay, I would like to ask you how the Argentinian society addressed their past of the role that they played in the revolutionary Montoneros uh, organization, revolutionary organizations. If you look through the internet, the sons and the sons or the grandsons and the grandsons are always angry at themselves and fighting against it. The Argentinian society, how does the militants of both, both sides, how do they contemplate this? How do they see it? First of all, I don't know whether you've seen the film, it takes place prior to the dictatorship and then, as, what you're, as regards to what you're asking, it's quite clear the jurisprudence that existed in Argentina and the clear difference of what is state terrorism and anything else. Like, for example, lesser humanity of uh, t state terrorism, there, for there to be trials, there has to be a territorial domination of where things takes place, takes place, take place. In Argentina, what's happened, state terrorism has taken place and they've gone to jail, the government, a great amount of repressors were, went to jail and that's what the ju that's where justice was able to act upon and what the society in general made, uh, accompanied in the majority. And well, I don't know, but it accompanied that, for example, just what they were going to be benefited with the two for one sort of, that is to say that for each year that they had been in jail, they would compute two, and that way many of them could now be free. This was something that they tried to do from the current government, and society went out into the streets and didn't allow this. In that sense, society, I'm not too sure whether it's divided, but it is still, there's still a quantity, an amount of people who don't like that those poor old men are in jail because that's what they say, poor old men, that they're poor old men. And other people think that justice must be made and they've got to be in jail. They've got to be prisoners in jail because it was a fair trial, contrary to what they did, but why didn't they beg forgiveness? None of them have repented. No, they still re revindicate what they've done, what they've done. And so that's very difficult to, that pseudo reconciliation that some sectors in society are asking for. I also would like to know whether Barbara and Federico could talk about how the project came into their hands, how it was stemmed, where does it stem from? And as it's such a clear-cut project from a political standpoint and the way it's staged, how do you both see it? How did you get involved? Hi. It starts with Benjamin coming 
talking to us with a film upon comp the, comp the complicity of society and there was an extensive answer vis-a-vis -vis this issue and the, the, and the vision that Benjamin has, w had was a treatment of several scenes and what was quite clear is that Benjamin wanted to show it wasn't an isolated effect of one person but it was a community and that interested us very much and there was a point in which we said it was like the B-side of, a, of an LP, a long play record, which was to tell what we wanted to tell without putting tanks out in the streets and helmets, but common people, run-of-the-mill ordinary people that aren't involved in politics, and I think they were more involved than anyone, uh, albeit, and so forth. He came along and it was, it was quite a long amount of work uh, accompanying Benjamin. I, my position is always to try to accompany him. He's got the vision to tell the story. We fit it in that way, but for us, for example, it was a project much larger, the largest, much larger than what we've done before, but ambitious at the same time in that sense. To make a, a period piece almost is, is, it was something new to, to us, and it, it was also, as regards the issue, it was also entertaining and fun and also a challenge. There's a whole aesthetics, a world of aesthetics that accompanies the film, which are, it was made like a film in the 1970s, and, and it was a lot of fun to get into, involved into the set when we were making the film and to see that world and these characters it was living through something that we never lived through, and that made us very exciting. Excited. Uh, that is to say, it was great. It's complicated to make a film such as this, a period piece with uh, extras and cars, and um, and it was necessary to tell the story not of a man, of, but of an entire community. So therefore, in that sense, it took a couple of several years to, and we we came to shoot the film, and all of these people who are in the front row here jumped into the project as well, and they contributed their part, their work, the financing, in order to be able to finish the project. But it all starts with Benjamin's treatment, a, p a position vis-a-vis -vis how to tell in a novel way these kinds of issues, and that's what hooked me from the outset. I'm not too sure whether you, what you have to say. I have nothing else to add. For the director, how did you find Alfredo Castro? And for Alfredo, uh, you realize and I realize that in all of your roles, uh, Aya, Tony Manedo, for example, you always, always personify what we live today, what we see today. A, a person with the power of your face, for example, do you not so feel identified with your roles, but how do you think you continue along those uh, with the roles you play, which is... You've worked with Lorenzo and La Rey, for example, and it's uh, you're well known. Well, how did you find him? Well, I found him like many people in Tony Manero, the film, marvelous film, where what he does is is difficult to describe. And then when we started to set up the film, it was in my close universe. I was thinking, well, he's probably working in other an industry. I don't know where we're going to be able to bring him on board. Mariana Laura Bert, the, director of, the casting director with whom we've worked for many years, who brought his name to the table and we tried to call him and we managed to achieve it. That's, it was quite impressive because these two antagonists, so to speak, albeit they're monsters, but not monsters because I said monster, he thought I was really calling him an old, but these are great monsters or great monsters in performing, the, the, the performing arts, that is say, I think that the approach, his approach is very cerebral. There's a lot of awareness. He's very aware of where the camera, which is interesting to see, whereas Alfredo has the a physical capacity of conveying, portraying another creature to the extent that you don't recognize and he seems he's somebody else. So all of a sudden he looks like Al Pacino, but as well, but it was a great experience working with both of them. Yes, it was marvelous. And I played very difficult roles, but, but that's what interests me. And there's conflict and to think how a society can create those monsters that came ar arose from one day to the next and to torturing and killing and making people go missing that moved me very much to uh, play this role i went to the last scene in the desert 
in La Pampa, and that scene gave me the key of the contradiction, the deepest contradiction, ethical contradiction, of a man, as I said before, between religion, his beliefs, political and ideological, and the human being, how a human being can become such a monster. I love those marvelous characters and also the pleasure and the honor and the joy of working with Andrea and Berillo, who undoubtedly, it was, I was afraid, but they're very kind and, and very kind and they're marvelous actors. And that made a main, it was a fantastic world to work in. And those co-productions that are taking place in Latin America or Iberia America, it's very important we should bear in mind we should continue to make co-productions because it's marvellous to work in other places as well. we got time for one final question. Yes. Hi again. For the director, I imagine to come all the way here, you've seen a lot of films. Are there any directors that have inspired you especially or that you've learned particularly from See it watching their films? Obviously many for this project in particular we worked by looking in the 90 films of the 1970s thrillers mostly north american of the 1970s sydney lumet for example for this project a lot of sydney lumet um coppola as well as in that period but but from one project to another one revisits certain filmmakers okay okay Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of the con press conference. Thank, congratulations to the cast and crew, and um, good luck with the film.